Okay. Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for the privilege of studying your word. It's a lamp into our feet. It's a light into our path. We ask for revelation tonight. You know where each one of us are at in our spiritual walk. And I ask by the Ruach Kadesh would just enlight our path tonight, Lord, and let us grow. And most of all, let us be your witnesses on the earth in the name of Yeshua. Amen. Amen. So if you're watching tonight, um, maybe for the first time, or you've been doing it a long time, there's always something new to learn mm -hmm. in the Torah portions. Um, one of our um, protocols or daily things we do is we read the Torah portion. Right. You know, we read it every day and then we do other readings as well. We read mm -hmm. the whole Bible through and I encourage you to get in the word. The word is, it's life. It'll change your life. The yes. word will change yes. your life. And the Psalm says, when you find the word, it's like finding spoil, finding yeah. treasure. And it yeah. really is. So we're in Tetzah Bay, which is, um, I think it's Torah portion number 20. It's you are to order. Mm -hmm. Exodus 27, Ezekiel 43, uh, Psalm 75 and Mark 16. I know you you read even, I know you have yeah. even more readings yeah, that you add to it, but um, do you have anything to share before we get started tonight at well, all? Well, I don't know if you're going to touch on it, so I don't know if we're okay. going to get there. We, we I don't know if you're going to talk about the burning of the incense we are. suite. We're I figured. About my... <laughs> we're can, always on can, the same you page. Can okay. add, you can add the, okay. the part that I leave out. So, okay. Um, no. Okay. So we have an overview. I'll I'll do most of the reading because um, I wrote it. So <laughs> um, there's going to be a command, and it's for all of Israel to bring this special pure olive oil. And it's going to be so the menorah can be continually lit. So it never, basically it never would go out. Aaron would light it morning and evening. And then in our Torah portion, Aaron and his sons are to be the ones really responsible. Right. They, that's their job. They've got to tend these lamps. They've got to mm -hmm. make sure that these lamps are lit with this, this oil. At the same time, they're also going to be right after that, they're going to light that in sweet incense. Right. So right. there's definitely a connection there. So you're picking up on something. Yeah. Moses is going to have to have the responsibility to make sure these special holy garments. I just love that mm -hmm. the priests had holy garments. Right. We're to be holy people, holy people and, and yes. aware of the garment of Yeshua's Amen. righteousness. His, 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 his garment is holy. Mm -hmm. um, and he would have them made by people who, and we don't know their names in this Torah portion, but we'll learn. But they are people who will be filled with the spirit of wisdom. So it yes. takes wisdom and the spirit of wisdom to make these special clothing. The clothing mm -hmm. of the high priest would have eight different parts. Right. And then the regular priest would have uh, a four, four parts. So, okay. Now there's a special breastplate of judgment. Mm -hmm. This breastplate of judgment, it will be hanging um, over the chest or the heart of the priest, the high mm -hmm. priest. You're going to have these 12 stones and oh, this is going to be a theme. The theme that you're going to have 12, 12 stones on this breastplate, but they're going to be inscribed with the names of the 12 tribes. Yeah. And that's, that's powerful. powerful. Yeah. And because it's not only on that one place that they're going to have it engraved, their name is going to be, and it's, it specifically says when it comes to the ones on the, there'll be these shoham, these shoham, it's a black, like an onyx stone, yeah. but it, it um, it actually means to, to turn white. So in that rich and it's set in gold. Mm -hmm. And, and so it's really prophetic. It's like, it's like we're in darkness, but we, we come to light, you know? Yeah. Um, but on these stones set in gold, six tribes would be on one shoulder, right? Six tribes would be on the right. other shoulder. And it's the same 12 tribes. It would be in it specifically says in specifically says in birth order. Mm -hmm. So there was something to why a person would be born when they're born. Right. Because even though Reuben kind of loses that firstborn status, mm -hmm. when it comes to the tabernacle, right. he still has it. Right. Right. You know, he's going to be the first name. So it's just interesting about that. Um, and some people who don't understand that there's more tribes than just the Judah. Right. where the Jews come from, you know, there's 12 tribes and they're going to be totally restored one mm -hmm. day, you know, um, inside this breastplate, there's going to be a pocket. They say it would have the writing of the name of God. And in this pocket, um, it, they call this the Urim and the Thurim, which means yeah. lights and perfection. And, in the, and this would cause when, let's say they didn't know what to do for a certain situation there, right. they, they needed a judgment. They needed God to speak. Right. He wasn't giving, it wasn't either, wasn't specific in the Torah or they needed God's guidance. They would go before this breastplate and they would ask the question and it would begin to light up. Right. 
Um, and the priest would have this, this thing is okay. The each stone would represent a letter, and right. each and and um, this the priest would have to actually figure out what is God saying. He'd have to put the letters in the right order too. Right. So it's wow. really it's like they yeah. would just like put out all these letters, and you had to figure. It's like oh wow, this is like the the hardest crossword puzzle ever. Except for they they were led by the Lord. Yeah. Wow. So it's and and. It, this breastplate of judgment would always be on on his heart mm -hmm. the, it's basically it goes along with the apostle paul he says i have you in my heart he was telling yeah. the people okay god's priests would have the the tribes of israel in his heart right well who is god's ultimate high yeah, priest it's yeshua yeah. he has us on his, his heart, heart. Yes. Oh, yes oh hallelujah yes and he he's going to give us the, the right answer mm -hmm. the right judgment so then you have this on the robe of Aaron. He has, well, you, you know how to read that part. He has these okay, alternating, alternating yeah, golden bells and pomegranates made of blue, red, and purple wool to announce his entrance in and out of the tent of meeting so he does not die. So if you read this and you really look at it, I was always told, it's like, okay, he had to wear these bells. Mm -hmm. We never knew what the pomegranates meant. Right. But we knew it was like, well, he had to wear these bells because if he dropped dead, they would pull mm -hmm. him out. But the Bible actually tells you the bells announce his going in. Right. And it announced when he's leaving. Right. And it's like, wow, it's not just, and it says, so he does not die. Right. So there must be some kind of protocol. It's like God's, God wants to know when you, when he was going in for service. Right. And he wants to know when he's going out for yeah, services. Yeah. Okay. The pomegranates, they actually represent the, the commandments. Mm. So in the pomegranate, there's a lot of pips, and if you the commandments are we believe they're supposed to have 613 commandments. It's been been said, and many times those um, pomegranates would have about that number. So yeah. the pomegranates actually rep represent. And you can see the color, so mm. the blue, the red, the right. purple. That's going to be a theme all throughout the tabernacle. Mm. On the the you know the way the things were woven, like that breastplate, uh, way, like that um, breastplate of judgment. It's going to be in different colors. You're going to see those colors, blue, purple, yeah. red, the scarlet. Mm. He's going to have this special golden plate on his head and it's going to say holiness to the Lord. And so it's like, this outfit is fancy. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it's to me, it fits a king, but it's a priest. It's mm. kind of showing the kingly priest that we are and, right. and, and how we, God had a man functioning right. like that. The garments were, the Bible specifically says, I didn't get a chance to, to talk about this, I'll just say it now. Mm. The garments were supposed to be for glory and for splendor. Mm. But mm. you know what? It's not for your glory or splendor. Yes, yes, and I think yes. that's the, the crazy thing about yeah. these garments. Like you and you and I, we get to wear yeah. the garments of glory and splendor because he says, I'll not share my glory with another, but we're not another. We're his sons and daughters. He wants us to wear his glory. He yeah, wants us to carry his, his glory garments. and yes. his splendor, the beauty. It was beautiful. Ah, it's good. A lot of tie-ins. We will in the future, I promise you. This tie-ins to Mordecai mm -hmm. because Mordecai, when he, after the great turnaround in the book of Purim, right. in, the, in the story of Esther, in the book and the story of Purim, he comes out. In a it with has with a gold crown. Right. He comes out with this blue. I mean, it's very reminiscent of right. um, this what this priest. So very interesting. The priests before they would go into service, they would be they would be prepared. How mm -hmm. long were they prepared? Seven days. Right. Okay. Yeah. It's just that's just the number of completion, right? And they would have to have special offerings of a, a, a bullock, um, a ram. Uh, two rams mm. for the one would be a burnt offering one would be a peace offering we're gonna look at that in a little bit there will be also a leavened bread oil and wine offerings and it's all going to be offered to make them ready to serve yeah and the offerings would be for them but it's also going to be like okay they're for you to get you ready but they're also the, for the people right right so okay so the bullock mm. of the blood the blood is going to be it's going to be slain there's going to be blood put on the four corners of this outer altar. And then it's interesting, only the innards, the inside organs and the fat, very specifically, always, you'll see this word a lot about the fat, mm -hmm. the fat that surrounds the liver and the, the two kidneys, 
that and the fat around them, they're going to be on the altar. It's very strange because you're not for the for the bullock, you're not putting like the meat on that altar. It's almost like, okay, we got to take care of the inside. Right. We got to take care of the fat. Right. Right. One of, one of the understandings of the fat is that which is extra, that which mm -hmm. remains. If you look at the root word in Hebrew, it sounds like, is there anything in your life that's extra right. that's hanging on right right that's heavy that's heavy right. but it's you know it's making you heavy it's making you fat oh, yeah. it needs to be taken care of <laughs> right it needs exactly. to be burned up it needs to be burned up oh that's great okay. oh i love that so then so then they're going to take this um bullock to an outer altar outside the camp and it's going to they're going to burn its flesh they're going to burn its dung its skin so it's a different Everything. kind of offering yeah. so and then you're going to have the first offering the ram the first ram offering and Aaron and his sons, first they put their weight mm -hmm. on the head of that ram or whatever, whatever animal it would be. And then, because why are they putting their weight on? They're like, they're putting themselves on it. They're putting yeah. the weight of their sin, the weight of, of who they are. Right. And then the, the that that animal, the, this is the first ram. It calls it the first ram. It's, it's blood is going to be sprinkled on the mm -hmm. altar. Then the ram is to be separated. You're going to take its in, its innards and you're going to put it in pieces on the altar. It's an Ola offering. And then it's going to be completely burned on the altar. And the Bible says it's a sweet savor. In other words, God's going to smell mm. this Ola, which means to go up. It's an elevation mm. offering. It's a resurrection offering. And then there's this second ram. It's called a peace offering, a Shalem offering. And they're going to do the same thing. They're going to lay their hands on it. But after it's killed... Aaron's going to mm -hmm. take the blood. It's interesting. Okay, think about it. this specifically. It's called the Shalom offering, right. a peace, peace offering. offering yeah. So what is that doing? It's healing relationship. Yeah. The peace yeah. offering. It's healing. It's it's bringing a relationship between God and His people, mm -hmm. between Aaron and His God, if you will. Yeah. And so to mark that, mm -hmm. they would um, take the blood of that ram and they would put. Moses was supposed to take the um, uh, the blood and they put right, it in yeah, the yeah. center okay. of your ear, not on the lobe. Okay, the it center. says that the center, it says it specifically in Hebrew, yeah. put in the center of his right ear, put it on his right thumb mm -hmm. and his right big toe. What does it mean? Mm. Think about it. We will do when we hear, of course, you've got the hearing, you've got the thumb, you're doing your 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 foot, you're Where going. You're walking, yeah. So it's like mm. everything's right. Remember we talked about, it's like, you know, our, our, what we have to um, be in alignment. We have to be in agreement with right. our do what we're doing. Right. right. Um, you know, we, we have to align in every area every, of our life. Yes. You know? so yes. It's like, what we touch. Yes. Everything. Yeah. So I thought it was really That's interesting. So powerful. About that anointing. And then later we're going to learn when a leper gets cleansed, you're going to do something similar yeah. to, to the leper mm. because they're basically, you're reminding them, okay, you didn't hear right. right. You didn't do right. And you didn't go, go right. right. But yeah. now you have a chance to get restored. Amen. Amen. And I think that how God's a merciful God. Yes. Blood is to be sprinkled on the altar. And then the oil is to be sprinkled on Aaron and his son's garments to sanctify them. Mm -hmm. So I just think it's just very interesting how be wearing these garments but they kind of always, they're like sprinkled with oil. They're sprinkled yeah. with blood. And that's what kind of like gives them that holiness. You yeah. Know, them, yeah. You know, okay. You, you need the oil. We'll look yeah. at that oil later. You need the blood. Then the second ram's innards, such as the fat, the rump, or some translation will say the tail, the fat that covers the innards, the, the call that surrounds the liver, the diaphragm and the two kidneys with their fat and the head and the thigh will be called the ram of consecration. So mm -hmm. this ram, so the second ram is what consecrates them and gets them ready for office. And that's probably why they get the blood sprinkled on them. They yeah. get it on their yeah. clothes. They get it yeah. on their ear, on their thumb, on their foot. Yeah. What, is it con what does it mean to be consecrated? Yeah. Consecration in the Hebrew is milu. It's just a word, mm -hmm. but it means a fulfilling, mm -hmm. only in plural. It's only in plural, literally a setting that this is what I think is amazing. Mm. When you're concentrated, you're set. Yeah. It's like you're set in, in a, in a setting. Mm -hmm. It's the same exact word about the, those shoham yeah, songs. I was thinking on the they show, are yeah. milo. They're yeah. put in a milo, a, a milo sahab, a gold setting 
Um, and here it says like, when you're consecrated, you're being set. Mm. It's technically consecration, also concretely, it's a dedicatory, a dedicatory sacrifice, a consecration, or to be set. In other words, like, it's like, okay, this is official now. Right. You're call you you know you're calling. Right. But now you're being set. Yeah. Now you're being placed. Right. Now, right. now it's like you don't have it just the the title now, or say now you have the you maybe you had the function before, but now you have the title and you have the function. Right, right. Mm. You see Exodus. Is, okay, so you go ahead and read. The it. elements of the ram of the consecration and three special unleavened bread loaves and cakes with oil are to be put in a basket and put in the hands of Aaron and his sons and Moses. And they're to wave them before the Lord as Moses. So, so Moses is going to wave them. Yeah. He's going to put his yeah. hands under their hands with that basket yeah. and they're going to, and he's going to wave them. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he's waving them or he's waving just that offering is yeah. the language. Yeah. You can't tell um, after they're waved. Mm. It, uh, before the Lord, this the consecration is put on the altar to be offered as an ola before the mm -hmm. Lord as a sweet savior of a, a fire offering. The breast of the consecration that was given to Aaron is to be waved as a wave service as Moses portion. Mm -hmm. This is very very interesting because there's a part of that offering was a breast, mm -hmm. and now for the second time, uh, this breast is going to be waved, and it says. It's Moses' portion. Mm -hmm. and it's like, this is his part of consecration. Right, because he has to be consecrated. So it's just yeah. because we, we don't think about Moses as being a priest, right. but yet he's doing all these yeah. priests. You know, we yeah. know he's a prophet, but now he's like functioning as a priest and he needs a portion. Yeah. It's really cool how, how God says, okay, there's a portion for everybody who's mm -hmm. serving. There's a portion Amen. for them. Go ahead. The breast and the head is to be set apart as holy and given to Aaron and his sons as Israel's Teruma offering for them for, from the sacrifice of the peace Shalem offering. So, so this is what scripture says. The breast and the head is to be set apart, given to Aaron and mm -hmm. his sons, and it belongs, it's, it's Israel's Teruma. So they're giving the head and the, um, the breast. Mm -hmm. Um, to 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 Aaron, and it's going to lift them up. Mm -hmm. That offering, then Aaron garments. It says that are going to be passed down to the next mm -hmm. in line of his sons, and the son shall wear the garment seven days before he enters into the service of the holy place. So just like now, you're going to have this consecration service for seven days. When the next high priest yeah. comes into office, they're going to basically go through the same yeah. ritual, right? Because for seven days they're going to wear those garments and be ready for yeah. their service. So I noticed that the word for service is not the usual word for service that we've seen in the past. So the usual word for work or service or worship is avodah. But this worship is a, or service is a different word. It's called shara. What it, so this is their service. This is their shara. What does it mean? It means to attend as a menial or worshiper figuratively to contribute so they're mm. contributing they're it's a it's almost like they're a menial they're they're a waiter they're yeah. waiting on the Serving, lord yeah. they're served they're a minister we sometimes yeah. we think of like we we elevate a minister but and a minister is a servant it's a yeah. yeah so they're attending yes yes to the service right so it's 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 a different word it, it means to serve, to minister unto, to wait upon. So just think about mm -hmm. it. It's like, wow, what are we doing for the Lord? We're waiting on waiting. him. We're serving so, him. Yes. The priest, he's like, he's the highest in office. Yeah. Yet, what is he doing? He's, so, he's yes. a servant. Yes. To do the service. Joseph is mentioned when it comes uh, to the service of Potiphar, mm -hmm. when he served the prison guard. It's the same exact word. Right. So Joseph finds grace in his sight and he serves. Yeah. So you serve out of grace. You serve, you out, serve of grace. out of grace. You, you find grace and you serve. And it's just interesting. It doesn't mean, and, and look at Joseph. Joseph serves, um, you know, whether it's a prison guard or Potiphar, both of them do the same thing. Mm -hmm. They give Joseph, you're second, you're basically in charge of everything. But who, who can God trust to do that? Right. He trusts servants. Yes. 
to be the overseers of his house. Mm -hmm. He's he, he entrusts servants to all the things that he owns. He puts it in our hands. He trusts us yeah. with yeah. the power. He trusts us. You yeah. can lay hands on the sick. It's not your power. But he trusts yes. us. When does he trust us? When we understand we're servants. servants. We're yes. waiting on yes. him. Joshua. Yeah. He spoke of as, you can read in Exodus 24. And Moses 13. rose up in his minister, Joshua, and Moses went up into the Mount of God, his we, servant. We know yeah. where was hmm. Joshua all the time. He's yeah. in the tabernacle. Right. He's waiting. He's, on, he's So it's just interesting how, you know, and look at all these great scriptures about people who serve. Psalm 101. Mine eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land that they may dwell with me. He that walketh in a perfect way, he shall serve me. Psalms 103, 21. Bless ye the Lord, all you hosts, you ministers of his that do his pleasure. And, and you know, you can see over and over mm. the theme. You're his servant. Yeah. You're pleasing him. You're yes, doing what yes. it's like so many people. It's 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 funny how they think ministry is well, I want to function my gift. It's not about that. No, it's I not. want to do what I want to do. No, it's whatever. What does the king need? Yes, yes. You know, amen. And you're gonna find this even in the book of, mm -hmm. of, of Esther for Purim. Psalms 104 for who maketh his angel spirits, his ministers, a flaming fire. We want the fire. Yeah. It's it's a servant. Yeah. Servant's heart is a kingdom, you mm. know, is a, is a kingdom star, mm. you know? So you'll have the continual offering afterwards. You'll talk about a continual offering. This one-year-old lamb, male lambs, they'll be one in the morning, one in the in the early evening, um, and they'll be offered as a burnt offering, and it'll be going before the Lord right. continually. Mm. So this offering will be offered um with the promise that God would speak with the Israelites at the entrance or doorway of the tabernacle. So you'll see that as soon as this offering is mentioned, then you'll hear about God speaking. Yeah. Yeah. So there's something about this perpetual offering of the lamb. Right. I think it speaks of Yeshua right. because we know his blood is continually yes. speaking for us. We, we know he is that lamb. He was mm. the Tamid of the perpetual. He is the perpetual offering. Mm. And it's just really cool. Now, I want to show you something that I thought was really cool. So remember last Torah portion, we read about how, God, where does God speak? He's, he's speaking in the Holy of Holies. He's right. speaking, you know, over the mercy seat, through the cherubim, you know. Um, and now in our Torah portion, there's another place. There's a, if it was like, say, there's a second yeah. place that God speaks. Okay. Does God speak in the Holy of Holies? Absolutely. We, we, in the Holy of Holies, it says he speaks commands. Right, right. But here it doesn't say he speaks commands. Here it says, I just want to speak to you. Yeah. And that's like, wow. Yeah. There's a different protocols. Of course, the Holy of Holies, they can only go in once, mm -hmm. once a year. You know, he didn't go in there all the time, mm -hmm. only once a year. But the but at the entrance, you go in there all the time. Right. And this is where God said, I'll speak. Yeah, hallelujah. Where okay, so look at this. So Exodus 29. Now, this is what you are to offer on the altar. Two lambs, a year old, regularly, every day. The one lamb you are to offer in the morning and the other lamb at dusk. With the one lamb, offer two quarts of finely ground flour mixed with one quart of oil from pressed olives, along with one quart of wine as a drink offering. The other lamb you are to offer at dusk. Do with it as with the morning grain and drink offerings. It will be a pleasing aroma, an offering made to Adonai by fire. Now we got to keep going through all your generations. This is to be the regular burnt offering at the entrance to the tent of meeting before Adonai. There is where I will meet with you to speak with you there. I will meet with the people of Israel and the place will be consecrated by my glory. So before you read on, mm -hmm. I want you to see it's two times. God said, yeah, I'll meet with you. I'll meet with you where there is where I will meet you at the entrance, entrance. of the tent. Mm -hmm. I'll meet with you there. I will meet with the people. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's two times. He says, oh, I'm going to meet you with you where at the entrance. Yeah. So there's something must be something. And it says the place is going to be consecrated with my glory. By glory. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is so, so rich, Power. right? Okay. So that's his heaviness, his weightiness, his, yeah. his abundance. I mean, it's all that it's who is God at what is he at his essence? He is glory. Yeah. Yeah. Glory is who he is. So verse 24. I will consecrate the tent of meeting and the altar. Likewise, I will concentrate Aaron and his sons 
to serve me as in the office of a Kohen. Then I will live with the people of Israel and be their God. And they will know that I am Adonai, their God, who brought them out of the land of Egypt in order to live with them. I am Adonai, their God. So remember, we talked about how there's different words for that there's a mikdash, which is the mm -hmm. holy place. There's the mishkan, which is the dwelling place. Mm -hmm. There's the tent of meeting, which is has to do with the, you know, being the light. So here he says, I will live with the people. Right. My, I was reading that in the Humash and it says, um, then I then I will have my presence. My okay. presence will be yeah. with the people of Israel. And then I just think this statement is meaning they will know that this is in the context, he's speaking to you, right? He's speaking to you at the yeah. entrance. His glory is Not sure. He says they're gonna know I oh, am Yud Hey Bab Hey. Yeah. I am their God, who brought them out of the land of Egypt. And he's gonna say, it doesn't end there. We've heard that before. Mm -hmm. We've heard that's part of the Ten Commandments. You know, the first commandment. I'm the Lord. You know, you saw, I'm the Lord God who brought you out of the house of bondage to slavery. But look at the last part. In order to live with them. And then he says again, I'm on, okay, so many yes. doubles, so many repeats on my head spinning. Yeah. Why did he bring them out of Egypt? This is the reason. So that I will live with him. He mm -hmm. wants to live with us. He wants, yeah. I mean, if you don't get that, it's like, you can be a New Testament believer and you can now, you go back to the book of Exodus, the Torah portion and say, what, what's God, what's the purpose of Yeshua? He wanted, he, he wants, wants God to be, to be with us, us. Yeah. right? What's the purpose of the, uh, uh, of this yeah. whole tabernacle? God wanted to yeah. be in the midst of his, I mean, there's no difference. It goes back to the garden of Eden. He was with the yeah, people, with them. but he yeah. says, I brought the reason. So we can tell people yeah. the only reason God's bringing you out of sin yeah, and death yeah. and slavery and, and Satan is so he could live, live, live among you. Yeah. It's not just to get you to heaven. So you see, it wasn't to get them to heaven. It was so he could live with them. The so they would know, yes, I'm their God. Yeah. And I think Amen. this is amazing because we, we don't tell, we tell people to just give your life to the Lord, but we're not telling them. It's like the best part is you get to be with God. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. I don't know if you guys yeah, are getting it. So I love it. The first, okay. So now he's going to speak at the doorway. The first mention of the doorway is going to be in relationship to the sin of Cain. So the first time this word for doorway is mentioned, mm. it's a negative, if you will. Okay. What does it say? Genesis 2, 7. If thou dost well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou dost not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. So the first mm. mention of a doorway, God's correcting. Yeah. You know, he's like, okay, sin's at the door. You mm. and It's, it's going to swallow you up. Mm -hmm. and, and you don't have to let it, but... Because if you do good, I'm going to accept you. But you right. don't do the right thing. Okay, now, the all, okay, so that Tamid offering, mm -hmm. that the lamb offering, when it, it's when it's going up, it's a kind of a reversal. Mm -hmm. So now the door is not a negative. Now it's not sin at the door. Right. Now righteousness is, is at, at the, the door. door. Yeah. Now God's taking care of the, Mm -hmm. the you know all those things he's he's giving them a way to remember the doorway now you're doing good now the doorway is not a place where sin's at the door now it's a place where i'm speaking at the door yeah yeah so cain yeah. made an unworthy offering mm -hmm. what did he do it and, and, and sacrifice to the lord he didn't do what was right he didn't give the god the first and the best god told him okay when you don't do what's right sin's at the door but if cain would do what is good in God's yeah. sight, he would be accepted. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like you were written off. It's like, hey, mm. but now look what Abel. Abel's accepted because right. he gave the first, the best, and the fat to the Lord. Now in our Torah portion, the same Hebrew word for door is the place that God now speaks. We are told this immediately after the continual you know, writing good offerings right. of the lambs are put on the altar every morning and evening, right? So these lambs, if you will, they're prophetic of Messiah. Yeah. Whose holy blood is continually speaking, just like these lambs' mm -hmm. blood did for Israel. And now God's always speaking. Yeah. He's speaking at the door. Yeah. 
Yeshua is the door. He's the yeah. door. When we worship, we're going to, a, you know, we always, we talked about this year. This year, 5784, mm -hmm. is the year of the altar. Mm -hmm. uh, the altar has four sides. It's a doorway. Right. Our prayers, our worship, it's yeah. a, our giving. It's a doorway for God to, to, to yeah. come in and out of our life, you know, with good things. Okay, so after this happens, we'll spend what maybe we'll look at a little later. So after this, then they're going to talk about how to make... Um, He's going to talk about how to make this special incense altar, mm -hmm. place it between the menorah. The menorah is going to be in the south. The bread of presence are, is going to be in the north. And then near the door is going to be, um, it's interesting, near the door yeah. was going to be that that incense altar. Yeah. Yeah. The, the place that God speaks is going to be near that incense, incense that, altar. Yeah. Just think about that. Mm -hmm. So the incense, we'll talk about it. It's to burn perpetually, and Aaron is to light the incense after he lights the menorah lamp. So first he lights the menorah, and then he goes and lights the incense. Then once a year on the horns of that golden incense offering uh, altar, there's going to be a special atonement, and it's going to be placed on the horns of the altar of incense, and it's a holy offering. It's a, it's a, okay, so that's going to be done once a year. That's the day of atonement offering. We'll, right. we'll look at it in another time, but now. There's also going to be, and we're going to talk more about these, mm -hmm. these altars. There's a special ransom for the soul offering of atonement also in this Torah portion. And every Israelite, if you're ever numbered, mm. you have to give a half shekel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this would keep a plague from coming on them. Every person would give the same, the rich or the poor. This half shekel would also be used for the maintenance of the, the, the temple. temple. Yeah. Okay. Then God tells Moses, I'm trying to give you a, an overview of the Torah portion, even though we've said a lot already. God tells Moses to make a special labor of brass for, uh, for Aaron and his sons to wash their hands and feet before they serve. And that would be a, a forever statue that mm -hmm. they don't die. This is interesting. Now, think about this. They have to have this brass labor right. they have to wash their hands before they do any service right and their feet right you go to the new testament and what's the big controversy the yeshua disciples don't wash before right. they eat right so could this be one of the reasons mm. they were so dog and you'll call it dogmatic about the washing of hands now, it doesn't talk about before you eat. It's right. about before you for serve. For the priests, yeah. Yeah, before they but serve. Yeah. Could this be one of the, what, yeah. the reasons that was passed down or became a a, a, a rule? It's not the right, Torah rule. Right, right. To the Pharisees. It could be. It's like, hey, yeah. if you don't wash your hands, you're going to die. Mm -hmm. Because it's, the Torah says if right. they didn't wash their hands and feet, it protected them from right. dying when they served. Mm -hmm. But they might have took it a little took too, it far. too far. Yeah. So it's like, mm -hmm. okay, so go ahead and read. Instructions were then given on how to make the holy anointing oil, what was to be anointed, and what the, that oil before the service of the tabernacle would begin. All the vessels were anointed, including Aaron and his sons. Instructions were given on how to make the special incense. Both the incense and the perfume were not to be made or used for any other purpose other than what God had instructed. That's very really, important. That's really cool. That's really cool. Exodus 30, 38. Whos, whosoever shall make like unto that to smell, there too shall even be cut off from his people. So they so couldn't. They couldn't even, not only couldn't use those ingredients the way they. Right. For just for smelling. They couldn't even yeah. smell yeah. similar. Right. Similar. It couldn't even smell right. similar. Um, it's the word ruach means to blow, to breathe, to smell. Mm. Um, by implication to perceive, to anticipate, enjoy, accept, smell, touch, make a quick understanding. So the under that, for some reason, that is tied to discernment, mm -hmm. mm. to perception. Right. The smell. That yeah. smell. Okay. And what we, okay. So now when the Torah speaks about God wanting to meet with his people, mm -hmm. what does that really mean? Mm -hmm. What does it really mean? Okay, so remember last week he said, I will meet with you, mm -hmm. I will commune with you from the from from above the mercy seat, between the cherubims, but and above the testimony. That's what we learned last week. That was last week's Torah portion. So he wants to meet with us, but what does meeting with us 
What does it yeah. mean for God to meet yeah. with his people? So in this week's Torah portion, God said he wanted to meet with Israel as well. And the same word is used four times. Mm. So look at Exodus. I'll just give you a few. Exodus 36. And thou shalt put it before the veil that is by the ark of the testimony before the mercy seat that is over the testimony where I will meet with thee. So that's talking about, of course, meeting the ark. Right. That place, you know, that place that he would meet. Okay. Um, he sounds like over the testimony where I want, he's going to, we, we know that he says, put the incense altar before the veil. Yeah. But now let's read Exodus 30, 36. And thou shalt beat some of it very small and put on it before the testimony in the tabernacle of the congregation where I will meet with thee. It shall be unto you most holy. So I'm going to meet with you. You got to beat, you got to have the special incense. So this is talking about the special incense spice using the special altar of incense. It's to be placed before the ark. Mm -hmm. So we already know that God will meet behind the veil, but it's not the only place he speaks or meets with, with his people. So we know what that about the veil, but this Torah portion says, I'm going to meet with you where? I'm going to meet with you at the door. door. I'm yeah, going to meet right. with you at the door, right? Okay, so where was this? At the entrance way, translated as door it could be a door or it's an entrance way this is not behind any veil mm -hmm. this doorway can be seen by every israelite and i yeah. think this is important to, that we just kind of realize like okay yes did the priests have special access could they go behind the veil yes but god was speaking not just right in the back part in the holy holies he's right. speaking at the entrance yes it means that Petach, it means an opening. It's a door, it's an entrance way. It's you can you see the pay. Pay is a mouth. Mm -hmm. it, okay, so you know that it's like it's an opening. God is looking for a place that is an opening. Yeah. And he had that place. It was the opening of the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. It was, you know, it was between the the offerings that were going up and that Mishkan. So it's the same word used for Abraham's tent. He had opened to mm -hmm. receive the Lord and his messenger. So Abraham sat at the patak, at the entrance. So why is God, why are we learning about this? Because Abraham had an open tent. Right. God came in. Right. Now you have another tent. Right. You have an opening and God will come in. He will speaking. speak. He yeah. will speak. So at Abraham's encounter with the word, Lord, that's it's you'll see Sarah was standing at an entrance way mm -hmm. the same word patah when she heard the angels she was at a door and she heard about this time next year you're gonna, you're gonna have, have a son, son. Yeah. so the entrance is a place for God yeah. to speak we don't have to even read yeah. it because it's there Yeshua is that door right but there's more in John 10. So he says in John 10, 7, he says he's the door. Yeah, let's read it. So yeah. we need Yeshua. We've got to have Yeshua. He's a door for God speaking. Yes. For, yes. for the heal of God. So think about, okay. Now, what we learned about this opening is where God speaks. Now, now look at John yeah. 10, 1 through 5. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter by the door into the sheepfold, but climbs up some other way is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him, the doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and he leads them out. When he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them and the sheep follow him for they know his voice, yet they will never follow a stranger, but will run away from him for they do not know the voice of strangers. So the whole context mm. of John 10 is on the door. There's yeah. a there's an authorized door, mm -hmm. there's a right door, mm -hmm. and then there's one who will try to come in another way. So think about it. the tabernacle is God's way. Yes, He's yes. all these things, protocols. Why? Because he wants to speak. Mm -hmm. Now, if you decide, well, I don't want, you know, I'm going to just do what I want to do. I'm going to do this strange fire thing. I'm going to go. God says, mm -mm. that's not the, you're not going to hear his voice. Right. Okay, right. so all right, so now Yeshua connects the door also to his voice and is leading his sheep by name, inferring to relationship. Mm -hmm. So what does God mean? I know I'm building up there. 
by meeting with Israel. What does he mean? The first two mentions of this Hebrew word are not even translated as meet. Mm. Guess what they're translated as? Betrothed. Betrothed. Oh, hallelujah. I was like, I was blown away. It's like the yeah. first two mentions of the word. I was thinking for sure, well, God wants to, you know, he wants to connect with us. You know, no, he's on, he wants to prepare us for marriage. Yes, yes. He wants us to be engaged to him. Yes. That's the first two mentions of this word. He said, I want to meet with you. Okay. I think that's what, what he's saying. It's not the only thing he's saying when he wants to meet with us. But the meaning is more than a casual. So it's like. You know, it's like, it's not like we're dating. No, no it's, it's not like, let's just see if we fit. No, it's not. Well, you know, I'm just lonely tonight. Can I, can we, can no, we? No, it's betrothal. It's so, engagement. And yes. it's not like I'm in trouble. So God just helped me out this once. No. You see, it's a, mm. it's a relationship. Remember Yeshua, mm. he's talking about on the door, you know, where you're going to hear my voice. You're not going to follow another stranger. It's relationship. I, you're going to know my, you know, I know my sheep by name. God knows our name. Yes, hallelujah. Exodus is the book of names. Mm. So it's the word Yaad. It's it's a word. So this is what the word meet. Yaad, it means to fix upon mm. by agreement or an appointment. Wow. God says, I want to have an appointment with you by implication mm. to meet at a stated time. This goes along with Amos, which says, how can two walk together? How can two meet? Yeah. Wait, yeah. How can two meet unless they're in agreement? It's, right. it's like, it's this is the word to summon, to trial. Well, of course, we do. You do. That, that is a trial. Um, it is a judgment, mm -hmm. you know, but it's a good judgment right. for us when you go to the meet, meet God to direct in a certain quarter or position to engage for marriage. That's what this word means to agree to a mm -hmm. point to assemble to betroth to gather yourselves together to meet together. So I thought this was a really I never saw this before. It's like God's the first mention of this word meeting has to do with betrothal betrothal mm. or an appointment to me okay we're, we're we're okay the divine appointment is one of relationship israel was betrothed to the lord at sinai that's when they said i do we will do and we'll hear they said it three right. times now the tabernacle helps the courtship continue mm -hmm. okay through these divinely appointed protocols the menorah the showbread the and all these different things are helping it, it is a date it is a connection right so here's what happens later in israel's history you've got the two kingdoms you got the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom the 10 tribes of the north the, the two tribes of the south the northern kingdoms they go astray mm. and in hosea god says i remember you when you first came out of egypt yeah and we were betrothed mm -hmm. and i so I and I love it, that. Yeah. And I love. So and you jump down to verse 19 and 20. You'll see that this relationship to God was so serious. Even when he divorced them, even when, you know, it looks like they're, they're gone forever. When God betrothed this relationship, it's hard to, you know, it's hard to break, right. especially on God's side. Mm -hmm. So look at Hosea 2, 19. I will betroth thee unto me forever. Yea, I will betroth thee unto me in righteousness and in judgment and in loving kindness and in mercy, I will even betroth thee unto me in faithfulness and thou shalt know the Lord. And that ties in with Jeremiah mm. 31 where mm. it talks about, they all shall know me. So this, this relationship at the altar, at the tabernacle, at the doorway, at the doorway yeah. God wanted to be in, in the people's midst forever. Now, did they go astray? Absolutely. But God said, you went astray, but I'm still remembering mm -hmm. that place that I spoke to you. And you said, I do. Yeah. And I'm bringing you home. And he's going to bring them home. And everything going on in Israel today, they might have to go through a lot. Right. Sometimes you have to go you know, through everything else to realize you actually had the best that you, right. you actually threw away the best thing you had. Right. You know, exactly. and, and the, which is your identity, yeah. which is who you are. Mm. Okay. So now let's go back to the beginning of the Torah portion. We want to get to your part where I know mm. you want to mention something. Look at Exodus 27, 20. And thou shalt command the children of Israel that they bring thee pure oil, olive beaten or the light to cause the lamp to burn always. Literally, we can spend the whole night on this one scripture. Mm -hmm. um, it's so rich. You can see. So all these yeah. words about okay there this is a command it's mm -hmm. a saw okay 
the children of Israel have a part in this special oil. It's right, not right. for the priest to do. It's this is like everybody has a part in this olive oil. Actually, Israel is known many times as like this this olive tree, right? Mm. So you have command, you have pure the olive. It has to be oil. It has to be beaten. Um, and then you have the word for light, the word for lamp, and it has to burn or to go up. So the word for pure, it has to be this pure, the root word for pure means to be transparent. Mm. Wow. Mm -hmm. They have to bring this, and really, we know that the, this purest olive oil is going to be a minute part of that. I mean, only the smallest drops are yeah. going to be pure enough. Right. Right. Okay. Depressed, it's going to be, crushed, to yeah. has to be totally transparent or clean. Right. To make clean or pure, literally to be clear, bright, or shining. It, it's yeah. basically a, a state of your righteousness. It's, a, it's a, to be sakak, right? Mm. But how does it get that way? Mm -hmm. Beaten. Right. It's beaten oil, oil made by beating or pounding the olives in a mortar, especially fine right. and costly. The root word for beaten is kata. It's a root word means to bruise or I'm going go like this or <laughs> violently strike. You cannot make this up. Yeah. You, we're thinking about crushing and we think, well, they can just put it in this. No, you know, no, you have to. And yeah, it's, a... it's to beat down to pieces, to yeah. break in to. OK, so to crush, to destroy, to discomfort, to smite, to stamp, to crush by beating. This is the word God told Israel to do to their enemies. Right. But now it's used for oh, oh, yeah. the, to make the, this pure, clear oil, mm -hmm. there's going to be a beating. Mm -hmm. To beat, to hammer, to forge, to beat in pieces, to break. Mm -hmm. To break down. We, no, who wants to be broken down? To beat, to dash cells, to be beaten to pieces. So it's to You can see how this could tie into the beating of Yeshua, the yes, crushing of yes. Yeshua, so he could pour out that his pure, life, his own. Yeah. yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. That pure. Yeah. To burn the burn the burn means it's the ola it's the it's to go up to climb. Mm -hmm. So that light has to ascend, and it's the light is maor. It means um, a luminous, a body, a luminary. We're to be the menorah, like yes, we're to be the, yes. the menorah, the or, right? Figuratively, brightness. And I love this part, cheerfulness. Mm. Somebody told yeah. me about, they went to a congregation and they're not happy. It's like, something's not wrong with that <laughs> picture because the something's light is wrong. cheery. Yeah. Yeah, the light right. makes you cheery. And you know, if you live in a dark climate, they say that people are more, that. you know, yeah. depressed more, but it's specifically uh, like a chandelier to be to have bright light. Mm -hmm. So you got to bring this cl beaten, clear, you know, olive oil, and it's supposed to be light. The first mention of light is the light. Yeah, and the firm on the fourth day. Yeah, it's not even. It's so, so okay. It's a light. Uh, this is the light on the fourth day. This is the light of the sun, moon, and stars. Yeah, it's not even. It's not talking about the light of the first day, which is the, the God's spiritual supernatural mm -hmm. light. It's the light of the, the feast days. Yeah. Okay. It's a, God said, let there be light. Yeah. And this and is that word. Of the heaven. Yeah. Yeah. Let them be for signs and for seasons, for days and years. Yeah. So they're, they're for the Moedim. So yeah. this light is actually tied into the Moedim. And you look at those seven lamps, each mm -hmm. one can represent a feast day, a Moedim. The lamp, it's mm -hmm. a, it's a, means, to, it's like, I love what it says. It's like meaning, it, meaning to glisten. Mm -hmm. The lamp glistens, a lamp, the burner or light. I was mm -hmm. like, okay, a candle, a lamp, a light. And it was like, we know Yeshua talks a lot about, you know, we, he's the light of the world. You know, we're to be the light of yeah. the world. He's, a, as long as he's in the world, he's the light of the world. You, you know, the Jerusalem should have been the light of the world. All right, those things, right? right? That's like, but we should we should be glistening, right? It should be mm. glistening. It's like all of Israel, you've got to be together to get the right oil for this lamp. Yeah. Mm. So the first mention of the this lamps, look what it says in Exodus 25, 37. And thou shalt make these seven lamps thereof, and thou shalt light the lamps thereof, that they may give light over against it. So the first mention of the lamp 
mm. is the menorah. Yeah. And it's seven lamps. You go to Revelation, you got this Yeshua mm. standing between these seven lamps, right? They shall light the lamp. They shall light this glistening candlelight, whatever you want. It's like, and it's giving light in front of it, in the face of it. It's always giving. It's mm. like gifts. Right, right. And they have, but light can't give. There's no light without the oil. Without that right. beaten oil, without that clear oil, right? Or let's just say, what if it wasn't clear? What if it wasn't the, be the smoky? Yeah, it smokes, it burns. It's yeah, it's so terrible. It wouldn't be yeah conducive for. It wouldn't display God's light. It mm -hmm. wouldn't display. So there's a so all these words for lamp. Mm. Psalms 119, 105. The word is the lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So the word is could be a menorah itself. Yeah. The word is a lamp. Okay, it's Proverbs 6, 23. For the commandments is a lamp and the law is light and the reproofs of the instructions are the way of life. So you've got the word is a lamp, the commandment yeah. is yeah. a lamp. So sometimes we don't think it's like, the word is a lamp, the word is light, mm -hmm. the commandment is light. And we and why do you think the enemy hates the commandments? Yeah. Because it's a light. Are you it's talking about the commandments or doing yeah. like it's almost like now it's a sin to say, well, I obey the word or like, like that's a that's wrong. Yeah. That's that's but that's the way the light shines. So yeah. if the enemy could get us to not, you know, lift up the word, lift right. up the commandment. Right. Okay. Look in Proverbs, Proverbs 13, 9. The light of the righteous rejoiceth, but the lamp of the wicked shall be put out. So there's going to be a reversal. They yes. can dog the commandments. You can yeah. say they think they're outdated and the word, mm -hmm. you know, this word, you know, um, it, you know, it's, it's not for everybody or it's boring, but one day there's going to be a reversal. The right. lamp of the wicked there, all the, you know, and, and Proverbs six talks, uh, talks about the, the, the lamp of um, the seven things the Lord hates. That's the right, wicked the, lamp. Yes, yes. It's all going to go out. Yeah. But our lamp, this menorah that God yeah. told it, all of us just like, okay, you got to keep this menorah lit because one day all the world is going to come to this light. Yes. And yes. it's going to have seven aspects to it. Right. The seven spirits of God. It's going to have the seven, the seven feasts of the Lord. He said, you got to command them. You've got to give them the charge. You've mm -hmm. got, it's got to enjoin it to them. This is this is no joke. They, they this is not an option. A commandment is not an option. I, last yeah. time I checked, it, it's like you you're under <laughs> commandment. You, yeah. You're like you just have to do it. You don't right. have to like it. You just have to do it. Right. So, if now in Exodus that we're reading the first thing on our Torah verse says, all right, all of Israel, give them this command: light this menorah, or light this tree, because right. the menorah is a tree. Now go back to the first mention of command and you can see that it's the very opposite look in the genesis 2 16 and the lord god commanded the man saying of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat so the first commandment is you can eat of every tree except mm -hmm. i didn't give you the rest yeah. part except for the tree right yeah, not so now forbidden. god says all right now i'm giving you a chance to redo what was done at the beginning. So the command in our Torah portion to light the lamps of the menorah might be a help to counteract the disobedience of the first man mm -hmm. and woman who disobeyed the first command, mm -hmm. not to eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So now command everybody to light this tree. It's a way of restoring mm -hmm. or reversing even what was done in the Garden of Eden. The menorah, it's like the tabernacle is a garden. It's mm -hmm. a garden of Eden. It's a, it's a, it's a replica of it. It's believed to be. And so the menorah is a tree, but it's a tree of light. light. Yeah. It's it. a tree of light mm -hmm. and life. So, okay. Mm -hmm. When all of Israel brings, brings the beaten and pure olive oil to light the holy menorah, seven lamps in a way, it's a way of them now enjoining themselves to God and lighting the way to the tree of life. Mm -hmm. So notice how the mineral lamps could not just have any oil. Right. They had to have the clearest, the finest oil that had to be pounded and hammered until just those finest and purest drops could be used for light. Now, this is, we talk about this, but many times we talk about it's like, why do we have to go through things? You know, Paul says, I'm 
you know, press, you know, and but crushed. not crushed, but yeah. the, the, right, and right. Persecuted, but not, not abandoned, abandoned, right. Yeah. Struck down, but, but not, not destroyed, destroyed, right. Yeah. He's like, why did he have to go through all that in his body? Why did he have to like, or, or in his life? It's not you know, sometimes it's in your body, but most of the times it's like you're just dealing with people. You're dealing with, with, with situations, right. right? Well, what's happening? You're being beaten. Mm -hmm. So those pure olive why so you could be the light yeah a clear right okay right. so all right so the root word for beating this oil compares it to the beating of israel's enemies mm -hmm. the olive oil had to be totally beaten and smashed until it's yielded its finest oil but what if there's another enemy we're beating mm -hmm. what if we're beating our flesh what if we're beating ourselves into our nephesh, yes, yes into our submission? Emotions, yes what what yeah of course we can talk about the satan our we're mind, beating yeah. and our external enemies but sometimes the crushing is about our will yes yes you should have said not my will but your your will all right, we won't move on from that because we don't want to spend too much time on that beating. But then you have this this shemen, this oil, and it's grease. It's it's liquid from the olive oil, often perfumed. It, so what is shemen? It's richness. It's anointing. It's fat. It's mm. fat things. It's fruitful. It's ointment. It's olive or or pine. So okay, it's literally the word for fat. The, but the the first mention of this oil is mentioned in the story of Jacob's mm. ladder. The first time you hear about Shemin at all, Jacob uses it. it. Yeah. And he sets up this pillar and he pours oil on mm -hmm. it. Right. Okay. So it's in, it's after he makes this vow to God. It's like, okay, right. makes and a vow he, to God. And he pours it he, on he, the pillar. He, yeah. He, he yeah. It's actually, he does this first and then he tells God, you know, he, he's, he's he has an encounter with God. He, make, he memorializes it and he pours this oil. Mm. Then when he leaves Laban's house, mm. And Jacob set up a pillar in the place where he talked with him, even as a pillar of stone. And he poured a drink offering thereof, and he poured oil thereon. So it's like before he gets to Laban. Okay, so yeah. think about. It. All right, and it's like before he goes to Egypt because Laban is like it. But and when he comes out of Egypt, he's gonna anoint. He's gonna anoint an altar. He's gonna and he's yeah. gonna use the oil. Okay. Look what Isaiah sixty one says. To appoint it to them the, that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. And just a thought for me, Jacob had left sorrow when he had a run mm -hmm. from his brother. Right. And now he's like, okay, it's a new beginning. I want oil of joy. Yeah. Then. You know, he had gone through so much with Laban. He leaves yeah. Laban finally. Okay, Laban says, all right, you know, let's make this covenant mm -hmm. and agreement. And he does another anointing of oil. Right. Oil is symbolic of fatness, but it's also the oil of joy. The oil of joy. We need joy. We've got to have joy. Yes. You know, if you're yes. depressed, you need the oil of joy. Yeah. You know, we'll pray for that tonight. Look at, look, look at David says. Thou Psalm preparest 23. the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. So we know David as a king got yeah. his head anointed, but there's more to that. Mm. Even the priests, they got their head anointed with oil. Mm -hmm. they're, in a sense, we there is an oil anointing on you yeah. know, for each of us. It's the oil of joy. It's the oil of fatness. The root word for oil. What does it mean? To shine. Mm -hmm. And you can see that oil does shine, right? It was like right. by analogy to make oily or gross to become or make wax or fat it's 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 it, sh it should be positive because yeah. oil should make you shine it's this fatness it's just it's an abundance it's it's more than enough but now before i go there well let me just show you show you so five times a root word is mentioned in relationship to israel mm -hmm becoming so fat mm. with God's blessings that the fatness caused them to rebel against yeah. the word and the ways of their God and the covenant. Mm -hmm. So the very anointing of fatness that yeah. should bless us and empower us to serve, instead, we have to be careful yeah. because the very blessing in our life can actually become like a curse when you don't realize that this fat should be used for God. Yes. And maybe that's why the fat belongs to the yes. Lord. Yes, yes, you know? exactly. You know, okay, so 
And I just gave you one example. Look in Isaiah 6. Then he said, go, tell the people, hear without understanding and see without perceiving. Make the heart of this people fat, their ears heavy and their eyes blind. Else they would see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and return and be healed. Then I said, Adonai, how long? And he answered, until cities are laid waste with and without inhabitant houses are without people and the land is utterly destroyed so you have two aspects of this mm. oil it could be oil of joy it could be mm. anointing or it could be where that fat could cause you to not even hear god not even well, see what he's as doing as you're saying this i'm thinking the whole time about eli and his sons <laughs> and even hannah like what did she have to do she had to go to hear god she had to go through the entrance of that tent right so she had to go through but the problem was was that eli the bible says he was very fat and as we're reading this he could not hear because it's even says in the book of samuel and the word of the lord was rare why because eli had allowed his fatness instead of giving it to god and we know eli's sons was corrupt and all what they were doing but we're talking about the priest what are we talking about the priest and what God said was the priest's job and the anointing that was on the priest. And Eli had allowed himself to be removed, really, from his priestly duties. And he allowed his sons and he didn't oversee. He didn't look. So he became fat, which meant he could not hear. Now, tie that in with the menorah lamp, because remember, in the story of in the book of Samuel that you're talking about, mm -hmm. the Bible says, and the lamp was about to, to go, go out. out. Yeah. So in other words, it wasn't being tended. Right. It, what, you know, they didn't, they, what, there wasn't the clear, there, there wasn't, wasn't the no. beating. They were letting their flesh become fat. Right. And there were, and eventually that, that, temp, that tabernacle in Shiloh was not, it wasn't long after. Yeah. Okay. So Destroyed. you're, yeah. you're okay. So now remember that Aaron has to light the menorah at the same time, mm -hmm. then he goes and lights this incense altar, right. the sweet incense altar. And they have to, both of them, they all have to never go out. They have right. to be left. Right. Okay? And that's telling me something about right. the incense altar. It's time to me, it ties in with the prayer without ceasing. Yeah, I'm going to read. I'm going to, I know you got some scriptures there. I oh, think what you do got you have? It. I think, let me just, um, I think, do you have, oh yeah, you have it. Psalms. 141, may oh. my prayer be set before you like incense. May the lifting up of my hands be like the evening sacrifice. Set a guard, Adonai, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Let not my heart turn to any evil thing to practice deeds of wickedness with men that work iniquity, nor let me eat of their delicacies. So we see here that David's tying it in with the prayer of the evening sacrifice. But then Timothy comes along in 1 Timothy 2.8. says, I, did that, I desire, therefore, that in every place men should pray without anger or quarreling or resentment or doubt in their minds, lifting up holy hands. So we, once again, the priests, they had to lift they had to wave. They had to have all these instructions. So what is God telling us about our prayer life? And I, I'm, I was even thinking when you were talking about the, the, the beating and the, you know, when you're in true intercession, when, when you're praying, it's, it's not like a prayer of, oh God, I, can you help me right now? Oh God, I have a request. When you're interceding, there is a form of, of where your flesh you get on your knees and you begin to pour out and there is a beating that takes place. And what I mean is you're pouring out, you're yourself. pouring out yourself in intercession, standing in the gap. God, I stand in the gap for this person, my, my children, my, my country, I stand in the gap for Israel. And with the priests, they were standing in the gap for all of Israel when they were offering up those those sacrifices, they were, they were interceding. So even now, as we are called to be intercessors, we are called to when we pray, and we've talked about this several weeks ago about lifting up holy hands, lift up your hands when you're interceding, pray as Timothy says, because it's important. It's that incense. Our prayers are incense. Revelation I, eight. I do you I have that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let's read revelation. Let's just bring it all the way. Another angel came and stood at the altar. He had a golden censer and much incense was given to him so that he might add it to the prayers of who 
the saints of God's people on the golden altar in front of the throne and the smoke and fragrant aroma of the incense with the prayers of the saints, God's people ascended before God from the angel's hand. So the angel took the censer and filled it with fire from the altar and hurled it to the earth. And there were and there were peals of thunder and loud rumblings and sounds of flashing of lightning and the earthquake. The prayer, your prayers avail much. I don't think the prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And I don't think we realize it. So tie in now. You 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 hit a home run. You and you said stuff with Eli. I never thought about mm. with, about that fatness. Tie in the light of the menorah yeah. has to be perpetual. But at the same time, mm -hmm. the incense altar has to have that spice yes. um, lit all the time, yes, which, yes. Is the prayers. which is the so prayers. So in other words, you can't have one without the other. We, we want God's light to shine, but we're not praying. Right. Or we're praying, but we're not shining the light. It's like you have to have both, both yes. at the same yes. time, and they feed each other. Yes. And I was just thinking about this, I never thought saw this before. It's like on that aroma of incense with the prayers, um, okay, on that, on says on that special altar, mm -hmm. there must be incense continually before I throughout your generation. You must not offer up or, unauthorized or incense, incense on, on it, it, which is we, of course, we know about Aaron's sons, but maybe there's more to it. Mm -hmm. Nor should any burnt offering or grain offering be there, nor should you pour any drink offering there. So that golden altar, it it's like representing you and I. Yes, you don't put the you don't put on that altar the physical burnt offering, right. the physical grain. No, that goes why. on. Yeah. It goes on a different altar, but this is the altar that represents your relationship with your God, relation. your intercession. Yes, your, yes. You know, you're not, you're not, you're, those incenses are, are come from God, you know, from all those prayers. Yes. Are, you're not praying your will. You're praying his no, will. No, you're praying his will. And I think uh, that's, um, I think it's very interesting. I, I had to think about mm. the, about Eli mm. because I had to think about Eli because Eli is when the lamp was going to go out, right? And 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 God said, "I'm going to just going to judge Eli because he." So what happens? Eli knows that they're not doing the right things in the tabernacle, but he's letting it slide. Letting it slide. He's like, "Well, they're just my kids, what right. I, and I don't want to, you know." Because he was fat. Because he was, he was, he had just relaxed and yeah. let, and let it take place. Mm. And so I think it's a warning for it's every generation. Yes. we got to keep our menorah lamp shining. Yes. And at the same time, our, incense. our prayer incense yes. burning perpetually by continuing. We got to obey. Yeah. We got to guard God's ways. We got to, we got to keep doing the things that we know to do. Mm -hmm. It's not just one thing, mm. but this, it's like a relation. It's in a relationship. Think about it, in your relationship with your husband and your wife, your kids, it's never just one thing. No, it's like ten things. It's one. It's right. But they all work together. They work together. Yeah. And anyway, okay, we're gonna yeah. go ahead and, and stop the share. I that's how I'm that. thinking of that song. Day and night, night and day, let incense yeah. rise. Day mm. and night, night and day, let prayers rise. Day in and night, night, night and day, day let incense rise. Day and night, night, night and day, day, let prayers rise. You're worthy of it all. You're worthy of it all. For to for you are all things. And to you are all things. You deserve the glory. One more time. You're worthy of it all. You're worthy of it all. And from you are all things. And to you are all things. You deserve the glory. Hallelujah. Father, we worship you. We magnify you. Oh, Lord, as we've learned tonight, God, you said you have, and Peter said, we are kings, we are priests unto the most high God. And Lord, let our, let our menorah lights 
be pure oil. Lord, if there's areas, God, in our life where we've allowed our flesh to take control or we've had apathy come in, Lord, or we've had stubbornness or we've had rebellion, Lord, forgive us. We ask that you would wash us and cleanse us, God, right now. We want our oil to our 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 oil to be pure and lord we just right now we lay down our lives we lay down our will and we say not my will yes, but your yes, will be done yes. lord in our lives tonight and father i pray that we would all the holy spirit we give you right away the ruach kadesh to kick up our prayer life to kick up our time while we spend with you, Lord, will we make intercession? Will we stand in the gap where this incense, Lord, is going up? Our prayers are going up, Lord. We stand in the gap for Israel right now. God, we cry out, Lord, this is your land. This is, Lord, you you, you keep watch over Israel. You said it, God. We don't understand everything that's happening, but this is what we do know. We know what you said in this week's Torah portion. You are Adonai, and you delivered them out of Egypt, God that yes, you might live yes. among them. That's what you said, God. And we cry out, Lord, that you would open the eyes of the Jewish people, that they would see, that they would turn back to you, that they would teshuva, they would run, they would run, they would run and begin to cry out to you, God. Lord, we cry out, Lord, Lord, that you would free those hostages. God, that you would send your angelic host, that you would step in, Lord. And God, that you would give their government wisdom. They need wisdom. They need discernment. God, they need to know what to do be with those idf soldiers god protect them lord as they're in these tunnels as they're in the northern um israel lord as they're fighting against hezbollah be with them god let your angelic hosts surround them and lord we cry out for the saints we cry out for the believers in israel right now grant unto grant unto them boldness to preach your word with signs and wonders following lord you said god as we be, we read in the book of Mark, God, that you said, Lord, that you would give us the power, Lord, Father, to trample on serpents, Lord, that we would trample on the enemy, God, that you give us power, Lord, oh God, to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. That's what you said. And Lord, we ask that you would grant your and to your servants, the boldness, saints, Lord, yes. boldness to do this, Lord, to begin to preach your word and begin to lay hands on the sick. And Lord, we cry out for great joy. This is a month. Adar is a month of joy that in double joy because we get two months. Yes, oh, the joy yes. of the Lord is our our strength the joy of the lord is israel's strength oh god yes the us with that oil of joy Thank right you. now Be and lord joy. send your joy lord over your saints in israel they need it right now god yes. and we yes. thank yes. you lord for america yes. we cry out lord for our nation lord that we would be we would be about the father's business and we'd be telling yes. everyone yes. about you god yes. oh we thank you yes. lord oh for what you're doing in our lives god Oh, let us put on the garments, Lord. Let us wear your garment right now. Lord, we gird our loins with your truth right now. Let we put on the, the garments of Yeshua. You, we yes, shot our feet yes. with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We lift up. Lord, the shield, the faith, the stop safari darts of the enemy. We put on the helmet of salvation, the wisdom, the mind of Christ. We put on your breastplate of righteousness. We stand in your holiness right now. We take, Lord, the, the sword of the spirit, Lord, right now that annihilates the devil. Teach us how to wield the sword of the word. Lord, teach us, God. Yes. And we pray in the Holy Spirit. If you're filled with the spirit, pray in the Holy Spirit with me right now. Il la manda la bashila la bokota tara da biande Hira da bashonda la la baya shike da 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 bashonde right now why do we pray in the holy spirit because when we pray in the holy spirit we encourage we encourage you know when you're sad that's the best time to pray in the holy spirit ora da bashonda la la bokota tara da bashile la bata tara da basho And Lord, we're going to enjoy one day. You're going to come back and we're going to enjoy that marriage yes, together. Yes, oh, yes. we thank you for it, Lord, right now in the name of Yeshua. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. amen, amen. Well, I don't know. If